Hello everyone! In this video, we're going to explain basic principles of open loop control. As an example, we're going to use a mass spring damper system that you can see over here. And we're going to derive a transfer function form of this system. Then we're going to introduce a controller an open loop controller whose main purpose is to determine the control force F that will steer the mass to a desired position. For example, let's say that you want mass to be at 0 0.5 meters from its equilibrium point. So the goal of the control algorithm or the controller is to move the mass from certain initial position for example from here to this position in certain amount of time Open loop control is arguably one of the most simplest method for controlling dynamical systems. We're going to explain how to derive such a controller on the basis of the system description given by the transfer function. Then we're going to explain how to simulate an open loop control method in MATLAB. And finally, we're going to investigate some of the drawbacks of the open loop controller. That is, we're going to show that open loop control approach is very sensitive to model uncertainties. Then we're going to show that the open loop control method is also sensitive to unmodeled disturbances. For example, you can assume that you have a force D, which is a disturbance force uh, acting on the system and you can assume that this uh, force is not known and then we are going to numerically investigate how our open loop controller will behave when we have this disturbance force and how much of performance of control performance we are going to lose and finally we are going to show that with a simple open loop control you cannot shape the transient response of the system and we're going to briefly mention some methods that can be used to shape the transient response of the system, some open loop approaches. To make this presentation as clear as possible, I have created a web page or a post that nicely summarizes everything that I will explain in this video. You can find the link to this post or web page in the description below. Let us start with a basic philosophy of an open loop control approach. Namely, consider this system. This is a mass damper spring system. And we assume that there is a control force, control force F, that's being used to steer the mass from some initial position, or for example, from equilibrium point, to some desired position. So the control objective is to steer the mass or to move the mass from some initial position to some desired displacement. We use the control force F to achieve that. So this is basically, this control force is an output of our controller. Our controller should be able to generate this control force. There should be an actuator here somewhere, which I didn't include for simplicity, that generates this force. And the controller, which today is in most cases a digital controller, will generate control voltages for the actuator that will in turn generate control force that will move the mass. Now, you might stop me over here and ask me the following question. Why do I insist on mass spring damper systems? That's a very good question. If you followed some of my previous videos and lectures, 
You might remember that a few times I mentioned that mass spring damper systems, which are generally second order systems, are used to represent a large number of mechanical, electrical, biological, economical, and many other systems. These, all these classes of systems, when they're linearized, they can be represented as mass spring and damper systems. That's why this particular example here is very generic and it can be used to demonstrate basic principles of control algorithms. The open loop control approach computes control voltages that generate control, control force F without having information about system displacement. So this approach kind of assumes that you know perfectly well how the system will behave once you apply a certain force. For example, through some experience or through some calculations, we can say, for example, in order to move the mass from some initial position, let's say from here, to, let's say, 0 0.5 meters from this position, we need to generate the force of, for example, 10 newtons. And we know that either from our experience, by repeating one experiment 10,000 of times, or we might know some system model, and on the basis of such a system model, we can kind of figure out what's the amount of force needed to move the mass from the initial position to the desired position. So that's the philosophy of the open loop control. The open loop control does not use a feedback information about the displacement so this link does not exist in an open loop control to generate the force F that is the force is generated on the basis either our previous experience or on the basis of model of the system we have and we do not, while calculating the force, we do not take into account the real-time feedback, the real-time information collected from a sensor about the displacement. So, in this video, I'm going to teach you on this simple model how to compute, how to determine the force F that needs to be applied to the mass such that you move the mass to desired position. The open loop control approach that I'm going to explain is relatively simple. It is based on inverting the steady state system gain. And there are many more, more advanced open loop control approaches. However, for simplicity and for brevity of this video, and since it, the main purpose of this video is to teach you basic principle, principles, I'm going to stick to a basic formulation and to the arguably the most simplest open loop control approach. Okay, so as I have shown in my previous video, the link is given in the description below, this system can be modeled as follows. So A and B are the gains. A is the steady state gain of the system when an input force is being applied, tau1 and tau2 are constants, a B is the steady state system gain from the disturbance side, right? And these are two transfer functions that we use to model the influence of the control force and the influence of the disturbance force. Now, if we basically go one step further, we can define these two transfer functions. So we can define W1 and W2 as two transfer functions. Right. Then, if we go one step further, if we go one step further, we can basically come up with the following 
system description. So this system description is, uh, is relatively simple and it's very instructable to explain how to derive this system description. So what do we see over here? The displacement of the body x of s can be represented as w1 of s times the force plus w2 of s times the disturbance force. This is the control, this is the disturbance force. Now, what is interesting over here, if you compare these two transfer functions, you can see basically that we can represent this expression over here as follows. So what, what we can do, we can take out W1 of S and inside of the bracket we have F plus what? W2 over W1 I deliberately omit S here, right, for simplicity, times D. Okay, now, obviously, if you divide W1 by W2, or W2 by W1, you will, you will obtain what? You will obtain B over A. So this whole expression that I'm going to continue to write over here will look like this, X of S, we'll have the following form. We will have W1 of S multiplying F plus B over A times D. Okay, where W1, W1 is nothing less than this part over here. So it's the, co this part is called the plan the plant. In control engineering terminology, the system is usually called the plant. Right. Now, this equation over here corresponds to this part of the block diagram. This is basically an open loop model of the system. Now, we are going to assume, we are going to assume that our control force F is generated by a controller. So we are going to generate control F by multiplying certain reference signal R. This reference signal R represents the desired position of our mass. For example, this can be 0 0.5 meter, 1 meter, 0 0.3 meters. So this is something that we generate. This is our desired value, the reference signal. Usually in control system terminology, this is called the reference signal. So our controller will basically be based on multiplying the desired value by certain constant k. And the purpose of this video is to teach you how to find this constant k, k such that when you apply the reference signal, the mass will be moved in some steady state, at steady state, at the desired position. Okay, so this part over here, this equation, corresponds to this part of the block diagram. Let us now see how to compute this controller K. So, remember, open loop control 
is only based on the system model. It does not take into account the feedback information from the system. Also, it does not take into account the disturbances acting on the system. So, this is all we know in order to derive the open loop control. This is basically the system model from the control force to the displacement. You can see my previous video on how to transform an ordinary differential equation describing the dynamics of the mass spring system in this form. As we have explained previously, the controller will have the following form. Now, let us assume that our R of t is constant and equal to some desired value for time greater than e and equal to zero, right? In this case, the control force will have the following form. Now, the next step is to transform the expressions we have in the Laplace domain. So if we start from this time domain equation, if we apply the Laplace transform of f of t, and if we take into account that f of t is k times rd, we will obtain that the Laplace transform of this unit step basically not unit step this is a scaled unit step function is k times rd times 1 over s because we know that laplace transform of some constant c is c over s since this is a constant k times rd is a constant laplace transform will have the following form so our control control force in the complex or the Laplace domain will have the following form, this form over here. Now, if we substitute this form into our equation, into our, our equation, we will obtain the following system description. So, this is the system description with the controller included and with the desired reference signal included. Now, our goal is to make h of t to be equal in infinity to rd. So the control objective, you can write it down like this. Is So, in infinity, or in reality, after some time, we want to make sure that our displacement is equal to the desired displacement or to our reference signal. And we want to find the controller k such that this holds true. Now, to compute this controller k, we need to recall one very important theorem and that theorem is the final value theorem. So the final value theorem states that if the poles of s times x of s are in the le left half of the s plane, meaning that if this is the complex plane, the pole of this transfer function or of this system should be over here in this region. If that's true, then we know that the steady state value of the signal x of t, steady state means at infinity, is equal to limit value when s goes to zero s times x of s. So, if we want to know where our displacement will end in infinity, 
we need to compute the limit value when s goes to zero of this expression and the value computed by taking this limit over here will correspond to the steady state x of t now in our case this is our this is our system description the system is stable, actually they are asymptotically stable, meaning that the poles of this system are in the left half of the S-plane. Consequently, we can apply the final value theorem, and if we apply the final value theorem to this equation, if we compute the steady state value of the system computed like this, we obtain this, right? So what happens here? If you multiply this expression with S, right? S and S will cancel each other, so you will obtain this expression. Now, you can simply compute the limit value of this expression, and the limit value will be equal to this value. So the steady state displacement will be equal to a steady state system gain from the force f times k times rd that is we want steady state displacement to be equal to rd by looking at this equation we see that if a times k is equal to 1, or equivalently, if k is equal to 1 over a, then we have that xss is equal to rd. So, what do we see over here? The controller gain, k, is an open loop controller gain, that achieve the desired system performance or desired control objective if it's equal to 1 over a. Right, now this parameter a is actually a steady state system gain from the force side. So to see this, if you apply the force f equal to 1, and if we do Laplace transform, and if we apply this force F to our system, so here is the force F in the complex domain, here is the expression, here is the displacement for the force being equal to 1, and if we recall the final value theorem, if we want to see what is the steady state gain, we will compute the limits when T goes to infinity X of T. This is according to the final value theorem S, Laplace transform of x of t, which is equal to x of s, so we take this limit, we substitute the values, we take the limit, we obtain a. So the a itself is a steady state system gain. So again, if our, if our control input force is equal to 1 continuously, our system will oscillate, this is x of t, our system will oscillate and it will eventually settle down at A. So the A is the system gain. Recall that x of s over f of s is a over tau 1 s plus 1 multiplying tau 2 s plus 1 and in steady state this ratio the ratio of the displacement with respect to the applied force will be equal to a and a is a steady state open loop system gain so, the controller K inverts this gain.
Okay, let us summarize. What did we learn now? Open loop control. What do we need to derive an open loop control? We need system model from the control force F to displacement X of S. Then we basically add a controller K to our system and this controller will take as an input the reference signal, the desired position of our displacement X of S we multiply this desired value by k, k should generate the control force, k should generate the control force, this control force is applied to our plant and we generate x of s. Open loop control that's based on a steady state system gain inverts the open loop steady state gain from the force f to x of s. So x over f in steady state should be equal to a. If we take this value, if we invert, we plug it in here as our controller, we will obtain that in the limit value x of t will be equal to our desired, desired reference. And that's the basic philosophy of a very simple open loop control approach. Of course, there are many more control methods, open loop control methods that are more advanced. But in some sense, most of these methods are basically inverting the system description. So what, what we did over here, we kind of inverted our model. But we inverted the model in the steady state. There are more advanced controllers that kind of invert the model, but not only the steady state part of the model, but a complete transient model. And open loop control is very effective when you have a perfect knowledge about the system dynamics. And when there are no unpredictable events that will affect your system during its operation. And plus, and plus, this method is very useful and very cost-effective since you don't need to have a sensor in your system in order to apply it. Of course, in reality, in, only in certain cases we will stick to pure open-loop control. In reality, we will often combine open-loop with feedback control to, devi to devise and to derive more advanced controllers. Of course, open loop controllers have many drawbacks and we are going to simulate these drawbacks in the sequel. However, let us first explain the MATLAB code for simulating a basic open loop controller. So, here is our MATLAB script. First, we basically define the system parameters. We choose the mass, we choose the damping, we choose the spring constant. Then we choose the control force constant that's equal to B and disturbance constant that's equal to C. You can see the physical meaning of this uh, constants in one of my previous videos. I, get, I will uh, put a link in the description below, below so you can first read that post and watch that video before you understand what are these constants. Now, in that video I also explained how to define transfer functions. So here we define W1 and W2 transfer functions, our plant and disturbance transfer functions. First we compute the poles on the basis of the system description, these lines 19 and 20. Then we compute tau1 and tau2 constants. And we compute A and B constants. And finally, with these three lines of code, we define our transfer function. So you can see over here, this is our transfer function. This is W1. So if I go back to my explanations, 
you should remember that W1 of S is A over tau1 S plus 1 multiplying tau2 S plus 1. And if you see the MATLAB codes, this is how nicely and symbolically we can define W function and similarly we can define W2 function. Now, I simulate basic performance of an open loop controller. I say, okay, I want my mass to be at 10 from the equilibrium point. So this will be my reference signal on the line 36. Then I need to define a time vector. So I'm going to observe the behavior of the system starting from zero. I'm going to use 0 0.1 seconds increments and I'm going to end at 100 seconds. And here I define my input signal. My input signal will be desired position times once times time vector. And I'm going to simply now simulate uncontrolled system and to see how the system will behave. Here it is. Okay, so here is the here I simulated the system. I used the MATLAB function lsim. This function is more powerful than the step function since it enables us to simulate the system behavior for any form of the input signal. In this case, I have a step input signal, so however, you can have a sinusoidal input signal, you can have any type of signal that you want. The first parameter is the system description, the second parameter is the form of the input signal. Okay, so this function is being used to simulate the system. Now, this is uncontrolled dynamics when desired position 10 is applied to the system. Now, let us add an open loop controller. So what do I do? I invert the system steady state gain and I basically compute the controlled dynamics. The control dynamics will be W1 times K. So if you go back to our explanation, if you recall the basic diagrams, we had reference, controller, force, and this is our system description, and this will be the output. So this part over here is my new system for which K is now 1 over A, And this is W1. So this part here represents to multiplication or can be represented by the multiplication of W1 and K. And now I simulate my control signal. This is the control dynamics using the same input signal using the time vector. And let us plot this. Let's see what do we have. Okay. So what do we see here? Uh, what do we see over here? This legend, okay, maybe I should erase this and I will go back to my slides. I will generate this again. Okay. This graph corresponds to this graph. Only I have nicely denoted the legend and I have increased the font size. So what do you see here? The first red line is the system response with desired signal where I did not include the open loop controller. You can see here that my system does not achieve the desired performance. Remember that I want my mass to be at 10. Okay, so this is the uncontrolled dynamics or dynamics control with some suboptimal control. And I invert the steady state gain, I multiply this gain with the dynamics, and then I apply a control signal, and I see that system oscillates and settles around 10, right? After, for example, 90 seconds, right? So this is the effect of an open loop controller. Okay, now, you might ask me, what are the drawbacks of the open loop control approach? Well, the first assumption is that we perfectly know, we perfectly know the system dynamics. However, in practice, this is often not the case. In our case, we assume that we perfectly know the steady state system gain. However, let us see, let us simulate the behavior of the system 
when we do not know the steady state system gain. Okay, so I go back to my MATLAB code and here's the code used to simulate the system when I don't know precisely the value of the steady state gain. Okay, so I'm generating another control gain that's basically equal to 0 0.8 times a. So here I'm assuming that the value that I know, I'm assuming that a true a, or no, that a that I know is equal to 80% of the true a, although I don't know the true a. So I'm making some 20% error. Okay, then I generate another controller. I generate another controller. I simulate such a controller, right? Based on this imperfect, imperfect knowledge about the system gain. And then I simulate the system. And let's see what do we get. You obtain this graph over here. Okay, now this graph corresponds to this graph. This is again uncontrolled system. It's response, same as, it, as in the previous case. The black line is based, is the simulation of the control system when the control gain, the steady state control gain is known accurately. Perfect knowledge, we can see we have a steady state. And here is the response of the system when I do not know perfectly the steady state system gain. Clearly, I'm making a, some error of 30-40%. So you see the inaccuracy. This is the loss of performance due to the model uncertainty that I have. Okay, so this is another drawback of the open loop control. How about a third drawback? What about when we have a disturbance acting on the system? So what do I do now? I'm now assuming that besides a control input here, let me erase this for a second. I'm assuming now besides my optimally computed control signal, I also have a disturbance. So I also have W2 and my disturbance D acting on the system. So this part corresponds to the previous cases. However, now I add here a disturbance acting on the system. Take into account that this disturbance, the knowledge about this disturbance dynamics is not included in this controller. So the controller does not know what disturbance will do to our system, right? They want, we want to see the effect of this disturbance on the output, on the controlled output. And how to simulate that in MATLAB? Well, first, what do we do? We generate a time vector, we use the same time scale, then we generate a disturbance signal. Let it be 1000, right? Why I choose 1000? Because you will notice, if you look at the dynamics, the transfer function of the disturbance, you can see the steady state gain of the disturbance is 0.001. It's very small, so I need a large force to generate some disturbance in the system. And I see that my disturbance here, I simulate the response of the system with respect to disturbance, only when the disturbance is acting. And then what do I do? Since our system is linear, I can independently, if I wanna see the effect of both control and disturbance, Since the system is linear and superposition principle holds true, I can simply simulate the effect of control and then I can add the effect of disturbance. So I can just add two simulated signals. The response of the system when only disturbance is acting and the response of the system when only control is acting on the system. And if I do that, 
okay? If I add these two values, and if I generate the plots, I will obtain something that looks like this. Again, this graph corresponds to the final graph in my presentation, and here is the graph. Here, this is the graph. So what do we see here? Again, this curve over here is uncontrolled system response. This curve is the optimally controlled system, the response of optimally controlled system. And this is the response or this is the effect of the disturbances. So this is the response of the control system when disturbance is acting. So the optimal controller or the open loop optimal controller is not able to overcome this part, right? So this is the loss of performance due to the disturbance acting on the system. Okay, so what did we learn? Open loop control. It is a very simple approach for controlling system. So here are the positive sides. Simple to implement, effective when we have perfect knowledge on system dynamics. And it can be a viable option, right? When we know perfectly how the system will behave and we know the, the model of the system. However, the drawbacks are sensitive to model uncertainties. Then, sensitive to disturbances. And another drawback here that's only applicable to this simple steady state inversion approach for computing open loop controllers is that we cannot affect the transient system dynamics. You can see this. So these oscillations in practice are not allowed, right? Although we can adjust steady state gain, right? We can adjust the steady state gain of the system. What do we see here, over here? We have oscillations. So imagine this is a basically steam, huge steam boiler, and the pressure varies like this. And this pressure can never exceed this value, can never exceed this value, right? So what happens? Here the system will explode. So we always need to kind of keep in mind or to constrain our outputs of the system. This type of an open loop control approach, since it's only based on inversion of the steady state dynamics, is not able to affect this transient response. In order to affect the transient response of the system, we need to use either a feedback controller or we can use an open loop controller that's more advanced that will kind of invert these dynamics over here. Okay, this will be all for today. I hope that you like this video and that you find this video useful. If you like this video, if you find this video useful, please subscribe or support this channel. Have a nice day.